we're going to talk about coil pots and um, get started on the building process. So, but before we do that, I want to give you just a little bit of historical background. I think that's important if you're going to be constructing something and using a technique that's been around for literally thousands of years. So, it's good to kind of understand that and then when you're showing off your beautiful artwork, you can kind of explain it and have that heritage and that historical information and really show that off. So. Basically, this is what a coil pot looks like if you're not familiar with it. And coil pots are constructed by gradually stacking and joining coils of clay right on top of each other. And then you pull it down on top of the previous coil using your thumb or your index finger. And if you have access to tools, you know, you can use a rib tool or a modeling tool to kind of help you out with that. Um, but you're really just kind of smoothing that coil into the lower level coil. And we'll get into that when we get into how to actually use this technique. But historically, um, coil pots were used for cooking, storage, preserving seeds, for the next year's planting, because if you leave them out, you know they're gonna get dried out, you don't wanna leave them outside. And a seed uh, pot, I don't have any examples of that, but they go all the way up and they have this little tiny hole in the top. That way they can kind of just dump out one seed at a time. And I'll show you some examples of that once we get into the build, if that's something that you wanna do. So, um, so there are seed pots and the structure of a coil pot really depends on the function. So for example, water pots, um, way back in the day, and even some cultures still use them, but so you have your structure, but it has an indented bottom, so that way you could carry it on your head from one place to another. Um, some pots are much larger for storage, they might have a specific lid, so it really depends on what you're gonna be using it for. For us as beginners, it's just gonna be probably a, um, you could, it's a functional piece, so you could put flowers in it, you could put water in it, you could build a spout on it and use it as a pitcher. So those are all things that you really will need to think about as you go through the build. Um, you know, coil pots are one of the oldest art forms. So there's always an argument about what's the oldest art form in the kind of the art world, I guess. And I would say, personally, I think it's cave paintings and then ceramics. I feel, you know, kind of a little bit biased, but um, prehistoric pots, by, they've been found by archeologists kind of starting in England, Scandinavia, Italy, all the way back to the Roman Empire, and even into the biblical times. So way back when, um, you know, probably started with basket weavings, and then eventually somebody dug up some clay, some soil, and they made kind of this pot, and they were wet, but eventually somebody probably accidentally put it next to the fire, and they realized that some of the clay was burning off, and some of it was hardening, and so that's how we were gifted the world of ceramics. So a long time ago, somebody figured it out and we still have it. So that's very cool. For us in America, coil pots originated pretty much in Central America about 4,000 years ago. So we're talking a really long time ago and eventually we're gonna talk about Maria Martinez. She um, is a really uh, great gift that we have. Um, she kind of transcended what pottery is into the United States and she gave us techniques that we still use today. So we'll talk about her as we go through the building process, but our coil pots in the US, um, they kind of originated in Central America and slowly, and I really mean slowly, kind of made their way into the United States probably about 2,000 years ago um, and that's how we got our coil pots. Uh, Really, they kind of transcended into Tucson, Arizona, because that's where Martinez kind of traveled to. Um, and then, and we're talking way back when um, the railroad was just kind of starting. So it was quite a long time ago, but in the earliest kind of part of the United States with pottery, um, it was about 2,000 years ago. So that's kind of this historical information I really wanted you to know. And we'll talk more about it as we kind of go through the process. But the shape of your coil pot is really going to depend on you know, the shape of, that you want basically. And we'll go through the different parts to a coil pot because that'll be important to know as you go through your build. And your coil pot will probably look more like this just because of the amount of clay that you have and the time that we have. So if you're just trying to learn the basics, this is gonna be a good shape for you. Now you guys will be putting a pattern on your pot. So this is a really great example of that and we'll be prepping those in your sketchbook. So if 
here we go. We're gonna go ahead and prep our clay and get started with the build. So let's do it. We're gonna put a few things in your notes before we get started. So this is just information that you need to refer to so you kind of understand the vocab when I am walking you through this. So just label on your paper, coil pot, and let's go ahead and put the definition for coiling. So it's even, round, roll of, coil, of clay stacked on top of each other. Okay, and well, the coil pot is formed by stacking one coil on top of another, right? So coiling equals the coil pot. So let's talk about the parts of a coil pot. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to draw, we're just gonna put an oval on its side and just do the best you can. We're gonna kind of curve in and then we're gonna curve out and then we're gonna slowly curve back in. Now, if this is a drawing class, we would really get into it and I would show you how to kind of uh, match this exactly, but just do the best that you can. Mine's not looking too hot right now, but it'll work for what we're doing. And I'm gonna add just another flat sided lazy oval on the top so we can label this section right here. So what we've got is, we're gonna start here on this side. So this is referred to as the belly or the body of a coil pot, okay? And then we've got this section. Of course, that could be referred to as the bottom, the base, or I often call it the foot. So this is probably gonna be the one that um, I'm talking about. And I probably use the word body most of the time when I'm doing a lecture on how to build. Then what we get into is, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cre uh, create like a dashed line because I'll often talk about the wall of your coil pot. So just put a little square around that section and that's what's gonna be referred to as the wall, right? So we're talking about the thickness. And for you guys, because you're gonna be building a rather small um, coil pot, your wall is gonna be about an inch, inch thick. If it's any thicker than that, it's way too thick. You know what, we're gonna make it even thinner. That's gonna be too thick for what the size that you're gonna do. So we're gonna do a half inch. We're gonna do a half inch thick. And we'll go through that as we kind of go through the process. So then this curved area right in here, that's gonna be referred to as the shoulder. And I'll show you this with a, a real pot here in just a second. So this is the shoulder. And then we have the neck area. So that's the section that's really curved in. So this part right here where it goes in to the body of the coil pot. So that's referred to as the neck. And you should be seeing kind of a little bit of a trend here. And then this section right at the top. So right here where I'm kind of coloring it in, where we made that second oval, that's gonna be the lip or the rim. And when I'm talking in the demonstrations, I'm probably gonna mostly call it the lip. Sometimes I go back and forth. And then finally, this inside oval, that's gonna be referred to as the mouth. So what have you figured out? Think about body parts. We've got the foot, we've got the body, we've got the shoulders, neck, mouth, and lip. So when you're going through and you're describing the parts of your coil pot, think of it as body parts. So now let's let's still look at our, a live pot here. So this is kind of very similar to what you guys will be building. So the foot, body, shoulder, neck, uh, lip or rim, and then where it's opened, that's the mouth. What we don't want to see is this. See all this craziness? 
These are coils that didn't get smoothed in. There's no shape to it. This person didn't put any thought into their design. They just slapped some coils together and turned it in. And this is really heavy. This thing is probably like three or four pounds. And the size of this, look, it's the size of my hand. It should not weigh that much. So we'll talk about proper coiling versus improper coiling. So at this point, we're ready to go get started. So gather your supplies, get your clay, and let's get moving. So some of you are gonna have a really big giant block of clay like this. And we obviously can't do anything with this because we're building a coil pot and we've gotta break our clay up into smaller chunks so we can actually create some coils. So um, I provided you with a popsicle stick. So you can use this, but just be careful because you don't wanna snap it. So you could kind of press it into the clay and kind of work your way back and forth if that's the only tool, tool that you have access to. But really you can cut your clay with anything. If you have fishing line, you could slice it through. If you've got old guitar strings, if you've got old, you know, it doesn't have to be old, but wire laying around, you can slice right through your clay really easily. So anything like this. Um, I've even used like old wire hangers before. So, but this is gonna slice through your clay really nice. But if you don't have access to anything like that, the other thing you could do is most people do have knives in their homes, but find an old one, don't use the one, you know, don't use your grandma's silverware. But um, you can just use a knife and you can slice through the clay. And what we wanna do is we wanna cut our brick into about half inch pieces. So about half inch. It's okay if it, you know, you cut it crooked. It's not a huge deal. And I'm going to go ahead. You guys are not going to cut, maybe do like three of these. Don't cut your entire brick. Now my brick was smaller than the ones that I provided for you. And if you're just viewing this because you want to learn how to make coils, then you have, I don't know what kind of, what kind of clay or how much clay you would have, but the process is still the same. Now you guys are going to build on your project board, but I'm going to take this away because it causes a glare with the camera. And I think it's more effective if we don't have it. So your spare clay that you're not going to be using, you're going to put this inside a bag, spray some water on it and wrap it up really, really tight. So I have my chunk of clay that I cut, and now I'm going to cut this into even smaller pieces. So it's gonna be like a one inch by one inch strip. So if you just have your popsicle stick, you can use that. If you have access to a knife, you could cut it with a knife, or you can use your piece of wire that you found. And this is very satisfying to do. Kids always enjoy this part. So now we have our strips for our coil pot. Now these are pretty big. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually cut these in half because I know just from experience that's gonna make a pretty long coil. And for beginners that can be a little bit tricky. So we're just gonna shorten these up. So now we've got all these little chunks that will eventually be coils. I'm going to take one of my chunks of clay and remember I'm going to gently turn and squeeze. Gently turn and squeeze. So I'm using like the palm of my hand and my fingertips. You don't want to squeeze all the way around and then squeeze, turn all the way around and squeeze because then you're going to end up with a flat coil. So it's a really slight turn and an even squeezing of the clay. So think back to your pinch pots when you were pinching with your fingertips, you were gently pinching and slightly rotating the pinch pot. It's sort of the same thing, except you're changing the position of your hand. So instead of using your, your, your pillow tops of your fingers, you're using your palm and your actually the whole part of your finger, really. So I'm gently, gently, gently squeezing, checking for thickness so it's thicker up here. So I'm gonna focus my attention to that section of my coil. Slightly rotating, slightly rotating, releasing. Even though it doesn't look like I am, I'm actually letting go of the clay 
as I turn it. If you don't let go, you're gonna twist this clay too much and it's gonna rip. So once we get it to about the thickness of our thumb and we look to make sure it's even all the way across, so if it's not even and you've got some, un, some areas that's thicker versus areas that are thinner, then focus your energy there and squeeze that clay. So because we want our clay wall to be about um, a half inch, we want our coils to be just slightly thicker than our thumb and then we're going to roll it out. And we're only going to roll these maybe like three times. So remember to properly roll and smooth your coil. You're going to start with your fingertips. And your fingertips are going to spread out as you roll the coil. And I'm not pushing down. I'm not applying pressure on the coil. I am simply just rolling. Because the weight of your hands is going to be enough pressure on this coil. Now the important part is that you roll from your fingertips all the way to the heel of your hand. Do you see how I did that? Because if you only roll like this, your coil is going to go flat. And it looks like I had a little bit of crumbs happening on my table, so I'm just going to get those out of there real quick. And I'm going to do that one more time. Now when you get really good at this, you can just kind of go back and forth and kind of work your way out to the outside of the coil. But as a beginner, sometimes it's good just to kind of go to the heel of your hand, bring your coil back, go to the heel of your hand, bring your coil back. If your coil starts to go flat on you, um, that's a sign that your coil is done. So if it does do that, you can kind of reshape it and get it round again. So this coil is ready to go. So I'm gonna set it on my project board and I'm going to move on to my next coil. So this is a really dramatic close-up, but I want you to really understand what I'm talking about when I'm turning my clay and I'm making this coil. So I have the clay, I'm going to put it in the palm of my hand, and I'm going to rotate and squeeze, rotate and squeeze, rotate, rotate, rotate. If you don't ro let go of the clay as you rotate, you're going to twist the clay and you're going to tear it. So squeeze and rotate, squeeze and rotate. And I think it's easier to make coils going vertically than you holding it in your hand like this. Squeeze and rotate. Squeeze and rotate. Make sure you check for thickness. If you've got a thicker area in the coil, then that's the area you want to focus on. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to squeeze that area of the coil. And you're going to continue this until the coil is about a half inch thick. made and notice that they're all different lengths that is not a huge deal because your chunks of clay that we cut up they might be slightly different so that's the result of having different weights of clay but that is not an issue the what you want to focus on is the thickness are all your coils about the same thickness and why is that important because you want your clay wall to be the same thickness all the way up and all the way around so as you're building them just kind of compare the size and if they're relatively same the same then you can proceed on to the next coil so once you have three or four coils made that are about the same thickness, um, we're ready to start the actual coil pot build. So your extra chunks of clay that you have on your board, we're actually gonna put those in your small bag because we need your board to put your project on. So find yourself any kind of plastic bag. It can be a sandwich bag, a Ziploc, you know, a gallon bag. It can just be a grocery bag. But we're going to put these pieces inside our bag, and then we're going to spray some water on them because we are going to come back to these, but we don't need them right now. So go ahead and spray some water on these, and it's okay if they get, you know, tangled up with each other. It's not that big of a deal. And then make sure that this is sealed so no air is getting to it. 
So now that we have a few coils made, we can go ahead and start our foot. So because you're beginners, we're going to use a mold and this is just going to be any kind of bowl that you have at your house. If you're on campus, I'm gonna provide this for you. But I just got these bowls at the dollar store and let's measure them. So it's about six inches wide and about three inches deep. So if you have bowls like a soup bowl, cereal bowl, any kind of bowl that you have at your house will work, okay? So, um, but what you have to do with this bowl is you're gonna take your saran wrap and you're gonna put it on the inside of this bowl. If you do not do this and you start building, your clay is gonna get stuck to the bowl and you're not gonna be able to get it out. So it's super important that you do this step. So we're gonna place this saran wrap right down in there and that's gonna keep our clay from sticking. So now at this point, we're ready to actually start the foot of our coil pot. The other supplies that you're gonna need for this particular build is your sponge. If, you're, if you have access to a rib tool, that would be fantastic. If not, and you have your popsicle stick, that will work in replacement of the rib. And then your fork, which is going to replace um, the needle tool. So in ceramics, if you have access to a needle tool, um, this is what you can use for scoring. If you don't have access to this tool, your fork will work just great for scoring. And in fact, a lot of my professional work, I use a fork anyway, because then you're able to score faster. So um, a needle tool is not necessary. So the first step is to take one of your coils and we're going to twist it up like a little cinnamon roll. And when you do this, I'm going to support the inside with this finger. So let me make this just a little bit closer so you can see this really close up. So I'm holding it with my finger with some pressure. And the reason I'm doing that is because if you just take this and you and you push it as hard as you can, you could tear it off. But by supporting it with your finger and just kind of slowly turning it, kind of eliminates that and it keeps it really even for you. So what you wanna do is you wanna curl this clay up. And I'm kind of pressing down so it stays really even, right? So we don't want it to look like this. We don't wanna have like space in between your coil. And we don't want it to be like uneven like that. See that piece sticking out right there? That's not what we want. So we want no space. We want it as tight as possible and we want it to be the same on both sides. So I'm kind of rolling that up and I'm pushing with a little bit of pressure with my thumbs. Roll that back out. I'm going to cut that uneven piece off that I showed you with. Okay, so this is about two and a half inches. And so for the foot of our coil pot, we're just gonna kind of set it inside our bowl. And depending on what size bowl that you're using, because it, we're all gonna have different sizes, um, then you would add an additional coil. So this isn't quite big enough for the foot. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that back out. And I am going to grab one of my coils and I am just going to add another little section to the foot of my coil pop. So I have a feeling this is gonna be a little bit too large, so let's fit it down in there. And it certainly is. So I just needed a little bit, so I'm gonna take just some of it off. And if you are a beginner, there is a way that you could still you know, keep this, but we wanna keep this as simple as possible so it doesn't confuse anyone. So we're gonna try this again, make sure it fits in the foot and it does. So you'll have to try that out and see what, how big you need that for the size bowl that you're using. So I'm gonna set my bowl aside and I'm gonna take my little cinnamon roll here and I'm gonna smooth this out. So I'm gonna pull this clay on top of itself. So with my fingertip, I'm going to just gently push that clay towards the center. And you really wanna make sure, I can use my thumb too, and you really wanna make sure that you're compressing that clay just slightly down. So I'm applying a little, little bit of pressure as I push down and in. But if you get like this buildup of clay right here, you need to push down and push that towards the outside. And that's pretty common. So don't you know freak out if that's happening to you. We'll fix it all up here in just a second. And if you haven't figured it out yet, clay tends to look pretty messy and terrible. Um, 
until you kind of refine it. So notice this is where the end of that coil is, so it's not quite even with my circle. So I'm just kind of gently push that in, and we're gonna fix it up here in just a second. So I'm just kind of smoothing, and again, if you have a kind of a, a mound here in the middle, just take your palm and gently tap in a circular motion, and that'll even that out for you. But notice how much time I'm spending kind of compressing this clay and smoothing it out. All the while keeping this the same thickness. So I'm not applying so much pressure that it's messing up the thickness of my clay. I'm just smoothing the clay, the surface of the clay together. So now what I want to do is I want to get this really round. So I'm going to take my foot and I'm just going to kind of roll it on my table. to get my shape back. I'm gonna take the sides of my hands and I'm gonna gently kind of push and turn. So now instead of a little cinnamon roll, we've got a little crab cake or a pancake. So now that we have this side done, we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. 